So when you finally get braces, what do you think is the worst possible thing that could happen? So I wanted to tell a story about what happened to me two years ago. I just had my braces put in a year beforehand. I was coming up very close to completing the orthodontic brace side of the treatment and I was looking forward to having the surgery done, which are the surgery I've just completed now. My jaw, upper jaw moved forward and my lower jaw moved back as part of a corrective surgery. So that's why my face is still really puffy and swollen. What happened was that I was cycling to a client in the evening around seven o'clock, very close to King's Cross. I was cycling very close to the pavement and um, I believe what happened is that I went over a pothole with some wet leaves in it. I slipped in the road and my face hit the handlebars really hard like this and um, it hit my lower lip like this and knocked my top teeth as well. At that point I fell on the floor, I passed out for about 30 seconds. Luckily I was wearing my helmet which got a massive crack in it in the front and thankfully a large number of people came to help me. An off duty nurse and also somebody who was a resident. They came to, to help me and they, they called 999 and got the ambulance and then they comforted me and made sure I was okay. You know, I was lying there on, the, on a kind of wet road with a crowd of people all gathered around me making sure that cars didn't run over me. I was just lying there in shock and uh, they told me like I couldn't move, I couldn't move and I wasn't really sure what was wrong because A I didn't had no idea what had happened. Uh, I had no idea if I'd been run over by a car or uh, if I'd hurt any other part of my body but they, they insisted I didn't move. I lay there waiting for the ambulance to come. Now for some reason that evening, despite the fact that I was in King's Cross, it took ages for an ambulance to come. And uh, we waited so long that uh, eventually a private ambulance for St John's Ambulance drove past and they decided to stop and then help me out. And they fitted my neck with a brace. And so I just spent a long time waiting. I called my wife. I told her not to come and get me because um, she was heavily pregnant at the time and she had just put my, my son to sleep as well and I, and I told her that I was hurt but I wasn't, it wasn't life threatening and I didn't want her to come out to get me. Luckily she sent um, her sister to come and she, she came with me to a &E later. Um, but yeah, well, I was lying there on the road for about 50 minutes so the, ambulance, the private ambulance drove past at around the 30 minute mark. And I waited another 20 minutes for an ambulance to come. They took me to A&E at University College Hospital. The nurse must have thought I looked really hurt, but um, because I was able to stand and walk, I was carrying this cardboard bowl, kind of, kind of catching blood dripping from my mouth. But um, apart from looking rather grim, it wasn't that life-threatening and so they I must have triaged me behind all these other people and um, I ended up waiting hours and hours and hours so I got to any around eight o'clock in the evening and throughout the whole time I'm waiting there with my sister-in-law who, who uh, thankfully made the time to come and support me but uh, we just sat there for, for ages and ages and ages waiting and the doctor did see me but uh, she didn't actually give me any treatment until around 4am and around the 4am mark she cleaned me up she cleaned the my cuts and made sure all the gravel and dirt came out of my wounds and uh, made sure I was okay. And it was around the 5 or 6 a.m. mark. She did the stitches for the, the a really large cut I had on my lip, which I can still um, see here. It's where I hit the handlebar with my lower lip as it was closed. And you can still see a uh, quite a large cut here which was a bit more pronounced at the time um, and now it's just kind of congealed a bit there. Around 7am I was discharged from A&E and then I came home 
um, with my sister-in-law and then I, I came to see my wife and my son. They were really happy to see that I was okay and my wife especially was very glad to see that I was fine and my, my son looked at me like he was really shocked <laughs> and um, a bit scared of you know all the cuts I had to my face. I, I came home for a little bit, uh, I waited for my dental hospital to open in the morning and we went straight there and I went back into the orthodontics department and the looks I got there. I became that guy, the guy who fell off his bike. <laughs> so I went to go see my orthodontist. When I saw him, I was very apologetic. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry for messing up all this work. And they were like, oh no, don't worry about it. Um, you know, we need to make sure you're okay. <laughs> and uh, I was really upset because the, the orthodontist later, they told me that I was very, very close to being ready for the surgical part of the the, the jaw surgery treatment. This whole accident pushed back my, my surgery by more than a year. Hadn't really like hit me how um, messed up my teeth were and how this, um, you know, all this uh, pain that I'd gone through, going through the braces treatment, looking forward to the surgery, etc. Um, had really hit me. And so I, as I was waiting for the for to be called in for the for the x-rays i i got really emotional i started crying um but uh you know the the staff at the the x-ray department were all very very nice and they all took the time with me and we we took the x-rays and seven of my teeth were pulled out of their sockets the orthodontist professor cunningham she called in a favor and uh, asked someone from the endodontics team um, in the same hospital to come down. Basically what the doctor decided to do, Dr. Crawford decided to do, was to um, push my teeth back into place. Um, that was allow the teeth to have the best chance of survival if they were physically pushed back in. Now, you might think that if teeth are pulled out and then they push back in, it should be quite simple to do, but um, it was extremely painful because what happened is that uh, in the space where the tooth had come out, blood had clotted inside the hole where the tooth went. Um, so the doctor needed to physically push the tooth through the clot in order to get it back into its place. And that was extremely painful. So they gave me um, anesthetic, local anesthetic into my gums and um, they gave me a lot of injections, you know, more than eight or nine injections into my gums, just for local anaesthetic. What they did was lower me down onto the chair, and then this this man, this fully grown man, was using all of his weight and strength, and his thumbs basically, and his hands to like jam the my teeth back through the clots and back into this right place. And each one was very, very painful, but you know, I knew it had to be done. Otherwise my teeth would be messed up for the rest of my life. And I just had to like push through the clot. And you know, I just get this image of myself squirming in pain, you know, uh, grabbing the arms of my, of my dental chair. He put all of his whole body weight down, pushing into my mouth the whole time. And it was very, very painful. In a, in a way, I'm, I'm glad that, firstly, that the dental hospital was going to be open on that day and that I was able to see my normal orthodontist. He was there, his supervisor was there, and the endodontics team was there, and uh, it all kind of aligned quite nicely together, um, even though I had such a terrible time. So only a few hours after I arrived at the dental hospital, the endodontics team had managed to straighten out my teeth entirely so that, you know, apart from all the scratches and the swelling on my face, my teeth actually looked pretty good. It looked like it was straight in a straight line again. And um, apart from my face, you couldn't tell that anything had happened. Later in the year after, um, it was decided that I needed to do root canals in the teeth to where the root had died. Thankfully, these were done by the endodontics team at the same dental hospital, by the same dentist who pushed all my teeth back into place. The braces actually kept the teeth in the mouth 
and save some of them from dying. It's a strange thing to think that braces could keep your teeth healthy and alive during a facial trauma because that's something you really want to avoid. I'm definitely not going to go cycling again in the dark after it's been raining when there are leaves on the road. That's just a really bad idea. But um, I hope that once I've recovered from the jaw surgery that I might pick up cycling again. But for now my bike is gathering dust in a kind of storage corner of my house. Eventually I got the treatments completed and um, I'm very grateful to Eastman Dental Hospital and uh, the dentists involved for the really fantastic treatment and uh, also to the A&E at UCH who, um, although they did take a long time, um, eventually patched me up and uh, allowed me to get on my way.